Mythology, scripture and history tell us that several thousand years ago there was a thriving performing arts culture in India which included music, dance and theatre. Bharata's Natya Shastra, the world's oldest treatise on theatre, speaks of companies of male and female actors, well-designed auditoria and a paying audience. The works of playwrights like Kalidasa, Bhasha and Shudraka are performed till today. Unfortunately, by the early 70s of the 20th century, which is when I, then 12 years old, joined my parents full-time in the theatre, things were very different. Then, as now, theatre of all the performing arts seemed to be in a state of perpetual crisis, always struggling, desperately seeking an audience. Much of our struggle over three decades of performance in Delhi and other parts of India was against the stifling rules and regulations that baffle and confound all those who work to create a professional theatre industry. These rules and regulations are the offspring of the Dramatic Performances Act, the Entertainment and Betting Tax Act and the Society's Registration Act. The Dramatic Performances Act of 1876, which gives the authorities the right to demand your script, pre-censor it or ban it if necessary, still exists in pristine form. The Entertainment and Betting Tax Act, originally of 1920, has seen some revisions in 90 years, but still dictates that as much as 60% of your ticket may have to be paid in tax. You could get an exemption from the tax, but for that you have to submit your script for clearance. The Society's Registration Act of 1860 stipulates that all artists have to create societies based on centuries-old British literary and scientific societies, with memberships, elections, minutes of meetings to be chaired by a quorum of three and no one in the society to be related to each other, which completely ignores the age-old Indian Gurukul Gharana system of the performing arts. We fought these leftover excesses of colonial officiousness in every way we could, through our popular political satires, lobbying, forming associations, writing in Indian and foreign newspapers. We didn't charge tickets but requested a contribution and everyone who visited the Akshara, whether they were Prime Ministers or anyone else, had to sign the following declaration in our visitor's book. But why were the British so afraid of this fragile performance form? And why are the Indian authorities too still afraid? Perhaps we can find a clue if we look back about 330 years and see why mighty empires and governments are so fearful of ideas and thoughts powerfully Bengal, articulated. Bengal, I shall perform! The British lost America when that colony broke away under the influence of some very dangerous ideas. Democracy, freedom of speech, expression and thought, and the pursuit of happiness. Ideas powerfully articulated by visionary thinker Thomas Paine. And 100 years after that, India, the jewel in the British crown, was seething with unrest and theatre was being used as a medium to voice dangerous ideas of freedom from colonial exploitation. We are in another century now. Liberalisation has happened, globalisation has happened. But you know what? 
those old villains, the Dramatic Performances Act, the Entertainment Tax Act and the Society's Registration Act are still lurking in the wings, waiting for the right opportunity to pounce. Excuse me, have you seen a boy? A boy? A boy of 11. He's my brother, Laszlo. I don't know a boy of 11. Laszlo! Laszlo, come out here this minute! Laszlo, where are you? So, not here! Ow! Comrade, you've given me away to the enemy! Help! Why are you just standing there? What can I do? Wait! Don't spoil it all by killing him at the age of 11. Please, Babala, let me stay, Babala. I promise I won't be killed. What do you think you're doing? Performing a play. Life's a glorious gift, if we may. A classic, you'd say. In fact, a slice of history. But, oh, so contemporary. Shut up with your rhyming. Show me your papers. Papers? Did you think you could get up on the stage and act, you numbskulls? Do you have a license from the Deputy Commissioner of Police? Do you have a license from the Traffic Police? Do you have exemption from entertainment tax? We have no license, exemption, permission. We are artists enjoying the freedom of expression. Guaranteed us by the Indian constitution. Why are you creating this confusion? Get off! Get off the stage now! Get off! Get off! Get off. Get off. Put the lights on me. And listen to me, Nico. You thought you lived in a free country enjoying the fruits of democracy? You are going to get a root shock because you fall under this act of which I am going to read a clause. This is an act for the better control of public dramatic performances. This is an act for the better control of public dramatic performances. Whereas it is expedient to empower the government to prohibit public dramatic performances which are scandalous, defamatory, seditious or obscene. Whenever the state government is of the opinion that a play, pantomime or any other play performed or about to be performed in a public place is A. Of a scandalous or defamatory nature or B. Likely to excite feelings of disaffection towards the government established by law or C. Likely to deprave and corrupt persons present at the performance. The state government or such magistrate as it may empower in this behalf may by order prohibit the performance. There is lots more coming and that's a fact. Of the 1876 Dramatic Performances Act. 1876, you heard me right. The British Empire was at its height. And even though the power of theatre was slight, the Empire crushed it with all its might. Eighteen seventy six, not a great time for the British Empire in India. It was 19 years after the Sepoy Mutiny, the first Indian War of Independence. Power had passed from that original multinational corporation, the British East India Company, onto the hands of the British monarchy. But the Indian people were unhappy. The memory of the brutal suppression of the mutiny was bad enough. But far worse was the colonial stranglehold over the country's economy, the practical enslavement of the population to further the capitalist vision of their rulers. But in this bleak atmosphere, the Bengali Renaissance bloomed. After 1857, the cultural and the intellectual expression also became more overtly political. Michael Madhusudan, who completely reinterpreted Ramayana and came out with his classic uh, Meghnath Bad Kabbo, and uh, Dinavandhu Mitra coming out with uh, uh, Nil Darpan on the inhuman exploitation of the 
uh, indigo um, workers and indigo farmers uh, of Bengal and Bunkim Chandra coming out with Ananda Mod. Uh, all these actually was galvanizing uh, the, the intellectual scene and which was making a direct contribution to the political process in Bengal, uh, which was uh, shaping uh, a new uh, political awakening towards uh, uh, opposing British colonial rule. Artists had taken cleverly to adapting British methods of performance like regular stage shows and in theatres, in theatre buildings to express themselves and these stage performances in Calcutta had become very popular and they earned a lot of money and so there you were, the British were faced with a peculiar situation in which their form of entertainment was being practiced to back ideas hostile to their governance and were also making a lot of money and so therefore were not so easy to dislodge. And when the indigo workers agitation started and the play was written and became very popular supporting the agitation, uh, it was the last straw for them. The success of Bengali theatre was not good news for the British. For not only did many plays arouse anti-imperialist and patriotic feelings, but the crowds were pouring in as never before. Houseful signs were up, box office cash registers were ringing, and theatre producers were laughing all the way to the bank. Dina Bandhu Mitra's popular tearjerker Neil Darpan about the sufferings of bonded labourers in the infamous indigo killing fields was probably the last straw for the British. And no doubt, playwright and theatre owner Amrit Lal Basu sat airs on the visit of the Prince of Wales and local British police added fuel to the fire. The Lieutenant Governor of Bengal, Sir Richard Temple, advised the government that a law prohibiting the writing and staging of libelous and subversive dramas should immediately be enacted. It's deuced inconvenient, old chap. HRH is about to visit, and you can be sure these damned Bengalis will get up to some mischief. Have to nip it in the bud, you know. Come up with some heavy legal artillery, if you know what I mean. If any magistrate has reason to believe that any house, room or place is used or is about to be used for any performance prohibited under this Act, he may by his warrant to authorize any officer of police to enter with such assistance as may be requisite by night or by day and by force if necessary any such house, room or place and to take into custody all persons whom he finds therein and to seize all scenery, dresses and any articles found therein and reasonably suspected to have been used or to be intended to be used for the purpose of such performance. Oh, horrible. So playwrights beware. Audiences beware. And theatre owners double beware. Because you never know when and you never know where the, the act will catch you unawares. जब नाटक करते हैं उससे पहले चार पांच जगह से परमिशन लेना पड़ता है एक तो एंटरटेनमेंट डिपार्टमेंट से लाइसेंसिंग डीसीपी एरिया डीसीपी और एसएचओ जो होता है एरिया का उससे लेना पड़ता है उसके अलावा डीसीपी ट्रैफिक से भी तो नाटक से पहले अलग अलग जगह हम जाते हैं तो हमको दो जगह की परमिशन मिल चुकी थी डी ट्रैफिक और डी एंटरटेनमेंट की मिल चुकी थी लेकिन ये जो डी एरिया के थे खोज खास के थे वहाँ से हमको लेना था तो दिक्कत वहाँ से आई आम तौर से जो है ऐसा होता नहीं है कि वो स्क्रिप्ट ले पहले नहीं था और बीच में पिछले पाँच छः साल ऐसा कुछ नहीं हुआ कि स्क्रिप्ट मांगी गई हो लेकिन पिछले कुछ दिनों से उन्होंने नियम बनाया था कि वो स्क्रिप्ट लेंगे और उन्होंने इसकी मांगी हम लोगों ने इसमें कि ठीक है हमको नाटक करना है नाटक के अंदर कुछ ऐसा नहीं है और हम लोग कोई कंट्रोवर्सी में नहीं पढ़ना चाहते थे हम सहज रूप से आराम से नाटक करना चाहते थे तो इसलिए हम लोगों ने उसको उनको स्क्रिप्ट दे दी थी 
तो उससे एक दिन पहले पुलिस ने हमको अचानक कहा कि आप नाटक नहीं कर सकते नाटक को रोक दीजिए तो उस समय हमने पूछा कि नाटक क्यों रोके तो उन्होंने कहा कि इस नाटक की जो स्क्रिप्ट है वो पढ़ी नहीं जा रही है तो हमने उनको दूसरी स्क्रिप्ट भिजवा दी कि आप इसको पढ़ लीजिए उसके बाद भी उन्होंने कहा कि हमसे स्क्रिप्ट नहीं पढ़ी जा रही है तो आप इसको नाटक को नहीं करें जब तक हम स्क्रिप्ट नहीं पढ़ दें तो हमने कहा कि हम आकर आपको स्क्रिप्ट सुना देते हैं और यहाँ हम आकर थाने में आपको परफॉर्मेंस दिखा देते हैं कि आप नाटक देख लीजिए उसमें ऐसा कुछ नहीं है जिसको रोका जा सके लेकिन उसके बाद भी उन्होंने जो कहा कि हम नाटक मत कीजिए फिर उन्होंने हमको लिखित में दिया है कि नाटक पढ़ा नहीं जा रहा इसलिए आप नाटक रोक दीजिए मैं लाहौर से आया था विभाजन हुआ था तो विभाजन के मारे हुए लोगों के सामने तो जिन्ना एक खलनायक था एक विलेन था तो ये इस तरह का पूर्वाग्रह मेरे मन में पहले से था लेकिन जैसे जैसे आ, मैंने पढ़ा और चीज़ों को रिलेट करना शुरू किया तो मुझे लगा कि जिन्ना विलेन तो नहीं है हीरो भी नहीं है एक मनुष्य है और एज ए ह्यूमन बींग उसे समझे जाने की ज़रूरत है क्रिएटिव जो पूरा प्रोसेस है क्रिएटिव डिप्रेशन जो है वो आज भी मुझे लगता है कि एक लोकतांत्रिक देश में ऐसा हुआ और आज तक हम कुछ नहीं कर पाए उसका मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट राम जी लाल सुमन एड्रेस्ड अ क्वेश्चन टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑन द फ्लोर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट अध्यक्ष महोदय बाईस तेईस जून को अरविंद गौड़ द्वारा निर्देशित नाटक जिन्ना का मंचन दिल्ली के हेवी ट्रेड सेंटर पेक्षाग्रह में होना था 21 जून की रात को इस नाटक के मंचन पर रोक लगा दी गई जिस आधार पर इस नाटक के मंचन पर रोक लगाई गई वह 16 दिसंबर अठारह का ड्रामेटिक परफॉर्मेंसेस एक्ट है लोकतंत्र में सभी को अपने विचार व्यक्त करने की आज़ादी है इस जंगली कानून का आज़ाद हिंदुस्तान में कोई मतलब नहीं है इन हिज रिप्लाई मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर होम अफेयर्स श्री प्रकाश जयसवाल स्टेटेड दैट इट इज़ फेल्ट दैट द गवर्नमेंट नीड टू हैव द अथॉरिटी टू प्रोहिबिट अ ड्रामेटिक परफॉर्मेंस स्टेजिंग ऑफ विच मे नॉट बी इन द लार्जर नेशनल एंड पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट एंड देर फॉर द एक्ट मे रिमेन ऑन दिस स्टैट्यूटरी कॉटन फिफ्टी सिक्स इज रियली द स्टोरी ऑफ गिरन गांव विच इज़ द मिल डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बॉम्बे and this tells the story of how the workers migrated to bombay from konkan and other parts of maharashtra and came and settled in one particular area which began to be called giran gaon the village of uh, mills and they developed a unique culture which consists of music politics dance other you know expressions and uh, the growth of say the communist unions being replaced by the shiv sena them being replaced by datta samant and so on and so forth right until the point where now the mill lands were being sold off you know and the mill workers were being denied any space in the city that they had had to create sunna huzura kuch kahe majura 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 we strongly believe that This is a play about working class history, and we need to show it to working class uh, groups all over Maharashtra and all over India, for that matter. And uh, we had just finished a performance in a coal town in in, in Vidarbha called Rajura, and the next day we were to perform in Nagpur three performances. And unknown to us, uh, the police had been watching us ever since we landed in Nagpur the day before. And apparently, there were some plain clothes guys at the show at Rajura. and a message was flashed to nagpur on the wireless saying that this place not to be allowed it has some nakshalite elements supporting it or it talks about something of that sort all completely untrue so the next day while we were setting up in the theater they switched off power we were told that you don't have police permission which our organizers had in fact failed to get i mean they had just neglected to get not failed they neglected so that became a good technical ground to shut us down and the minute the official letter came saying that we couldn't perform uh two police vans with armed police you know with guns and things moved into the compound of the theater the theater inside was swarming with policemen almost as though you know you read about some terrorists being captured and that kind of you know it was a completely over the top reaction uh, response from the state and yeah we weren't allowed to perform It's as simple as that padeshi gaddi padeshi raja aur bhopu swadeshi ka zor se baja और पेटी लेके वो मुंबई को भागा और मिल में फिट हो गया वो अभागा पीने लगा जहर के प्याले हो पड़ते गए जिगर के छाले गई जवानी हुआ मतारा नाम पड़ा किस्मत का मारा दिल 
It's actually, I think, fantastically uh, flattering to know that this little thing like theatre, which is can't even survive of itself. Theatre in this country is, is, is so young, um, it is so tiny, it reaches such a small number of people. And it's flattering to know that obviously the powers that be are so threatened by it. Because there is, and that really just reinstates the validity of how important theatre actually is because that live interaction is what moves you and motivates you and activates you so strongly. Again, if you look at it, the Dramatic Performances Act came about, uh, you know, with the British in the 1870s because they wanted, they saw theatre as a subversive activity. They, they saw that, you know, the, the, the freedom movement was beginning through theatre. Now, if you look at what's happening today, how different is it from what was happening when we were under the rule of the British? It's no different. It's the same thing. If you're anti-government or if you're anti-party, then it's seen as subversive activity. And uh, also you have the moral police. Again, if whatever the prevailing middle class values are, they would like to project that because that's their vote bank. So if you go against that, then the censor rule comes in place. So it's no different from uh, the colonial, very, very Victorian attitude towards theatre and performance. Well, you see, when it comes to mass media, I'm all for a proper regulatory body. But I'm also, I'm also convinced that the media, the, the people who own and control the media should try and self-regulate, like you have the press council for newspapers and so on. Similarly, for television and cinema, you need that kind of thing. But not for theatre. Because the theatre, the audience is quite capable. Because it's on an interpersonal level and the scale is the same. The scale of the actor performing and the scale of the audience watching is the same. You know, it's not, it's, there's no distortion here. Cinema is larger than life. You know, there's an intimidating presence, don't forget that. This is, this is, the, the television is in many ways the same because of its, its ability to, to reach out at the same time to everybody, you know, that kind of thing. Now, th therefore, th there's a great deal of power involved. In the theatre, you don't have the same kind of power. The state has not learned the value of the thinking artist and the thinking artist who comes out in the open and states with freedom his, his thinking. The value to that, the value of that in a democratically free society. This is a disgrace. Uh, on the face of it, this act is uh, unconstitutional. One of the clauses, particularly clause B, for example, likely to excite feelings of disaffection to the government established by law. That is the purpose of uh, democracy. <laughs> An opposition exists to create disaffection against the government. So this this kind of a provision in the penal code has been already declared ultraviolet, and. Uh, Unless you uh, sort of uh, preach violence and ask people to use force to achieve any object, uh, any, any expression of your thoughts, your artistic presentation, it cannot possibly be prohibited under the constitution now. This law should be repealed, period. In Delhi, under a notification first passed by Lieutenant Governor Jagmohan in 1982 and reinforced by Chief Minister Sheila Dixit in 1994, all registered societies are supposed to be automatically exempt from entertainment tax. A group had to simply intimate the date, time and ticket details of a show 
to the entertainment tax authorities by letter or by email. But today, it's a tedious process. A long and detailed form has to be filled, annual audited accounts submitted, and every ticket counterfoil has to be stamped by the authorities. It's like, you know, you, you don't have money to eat and someone's eating out of your bowl. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's one side of it. And then you finally say, you think to yourself, okay, I'll go out and get a sponsor. And you get a sponsor and then, the, and, the, and then whatever little help you could have got, even that's gone. Even though you are selling tickets at a level where they have declared that you don't have to pay tax, you still have to go to them for permission. You still have to go to them and give them your accounts. If I am doing a free performance, I am still going to them for a no objection. And I have to file, if you please, a list of my invitees with them. The system is, is, continues to be mistrustful. The system has very little uh, room in it to, uh, for the artist to take advantage of and uh, make a democratic point. So, and, and of course, the system knows perfectly well, with a little blandishment, you will get among the artists enough people to back the state and not the individual artist. So it's, it's, it's a tough, tough thing. It's a bad situation. But not, I would not say it's a hopeless situation. Today, the Indian performing arts, particularly theatre, are caught in a deathly bind. On the one hand, there is a state that reserves the right of absolute political prerogative and doles out patronage in the form of small grants and much lobbied for awards. On the other hand, we have a largely indifferent corporate world which gets no incentive for supporting the arts anyway, unless it contributes to the government's own arts funds. And what about the great Indian public? Well, what with the thrills of filmy chakkars, reality shows and the cheer girl soap opera, they don't have that much time left for the arts and farts. But when they do, there's always a show available absolutely free. Why should they support the performing arts? Let the government take care of it. And the government does. Now you heard our story. I'm sure you'll agree that even in the world's largest democracy, there is need for regulation. There's need for taxation. There's need for institutional manipulation. You, you need, need us, you need us to, to curb your imagination. imagination. The illusion of a constitutional freedom of expression. Because you can't be trusted to keep your mouth shut. On matters that are best handled by us. But! But, it really doesn't matter because we have the power to shut you up and put you in the locker. We are the real stars, actual heroes. So you get used to us, you pathetic zero. zero, zero. Let's get him off the stage! Get 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 off the stage!